Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Leo Colegio. I'm the uh, School Family Community Engagement Coordinator here at TEA. And thank you for joining us today for our uh, uh, webinar today. We have Dr. Ed O'Neill's going to talk about SB 89. We're going to look at high cost funds, 21-22 overview from Michelle Salinas and 21-22 special education self-assessment from Ramonda uh, Oloyali. So um, with that, we're going to open things up for Dr. O'Neill. Sure thing, thanks. Um, so I'll just share a couple of things. This should hopefully all be a reminder for folks um, just with the upcoming deadline, um, I'll go through. So this was the TAA that went out in July um, that highlighted, you know, following governor signing it on the 7th of June that LEAs have until May 1st to ensure that they, um, include a supplement um, of the, and, and address the requirements of SB 89, uh, the impact of COVID on evaluation services and everything else like that. Um, we also posted a uh, Senate Bill 89 FAQ that came out last summer um, that reminded folks of the May 1st deadline for this to be done. Um, kind of talked about how to address it, that there isn't necessarily a model form, but um, LEAs have to uh, ensure that they conduct this for um, both school years, anything, any student with identified disabilities in 2019 or 20, 2019, 20 or 2020, 2021. 20, um, and then meet the specific requirements. Um, you know, what that looks like, you know, LEAs have the, um, if you created your own supplement that you're dropping in, that's fine. If you're addressing it in the present levels, that's appropriate. Um, it just needs to be made sure that, um, that there is an IEP that um, documents it. If you've had a new IEP, so let's say you're, you had an IEP in August and you addressed it in August and, you know, that student reached age of transition. So you had another IEP in February, um, you know, just make sure that you're aware of that in, in case the parents have questions, um, because we have already gotten questions like what happens after May 1st. Um, if, uh, you know, a parent believes their LEA didn't have these meetings or um, there isn't, uh, they don't feel that there is documentation of those meetings. Um, you know, I would say treat it like ESY, um, you know, make sure that there is actual detail and documentation that it took place. Um, check box is generally not sufficient. So if you have it in your, you know, you talk about it in the present levels, but also note it in your deliberations or note it, note it in your prior written notice, um, those are things that we can use for evidence, um, starting with next school year. So the 22-23 school year, um, the monitoring through cyclic monitoring and everything else will look at this. We will look at it to make sure that it was done for IEPs that were conducted this calendar, this calendar year um, and as appropriate. Um, but after May 1st, LEAs can file a complaint. Um, they do have the ability to file a complaint if they believe that uh, this rule, which um, you know, we call it Senate Bill 89, but it actually did become um, Texas Education Code uh, 290052. Um, and it goes through the same stipulations of what has to be required, but um, Senate Bill 89 became TEC 290052, which was the COVID Supplemental Education um, Improvement, or excuse me, edu Individualized Education Program Supplement, excuse me, related to COVID. So, um, I will drop a couple of these items in the chat so you guys have them. Um, we've talked with ESCs to push out reminders as well. Um, just knowing that uh, we've got about two weeks before the May 1st deadline, we just wanted to make sure that um, to get it back on everyone's radar to ensure that um, LEAs are going to be in compliance with it. And that's, that's what I had. That chat is open for you, Dr. O'Neill. Okay, and yeah, as I mentioned, I will drop them all in there. I'll drop the FAQ, I'll drop the TAA so folks have it. Um, and I can even drop the, the citation from the Texas Registry. Is that all of them? Yes, sir. Oh, all right, real fine, thank you. And uh, with that, we we'll can move on to our, our next presenter, Ms. Salinas. Thanks so much, Leo. Good afternoon, everybody. I wanted to hop on today to just give some reminders about 
high cost funds. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, so just a reminder that the high cost fund application, which accepts in district placements, day placements, and residential placements, that application has moved to Apex, which you can find in Teal. Um, again, all applications will be completed in Apex for the 21 22 school year and moving forward. Um, here is just some Apex resources, and I can drop these in the chat as well. As well, all of our Apex resources are going to be found on our non-public web page. Um, we have a user manual, and we do have some user, um, like quick start user videos as well. Uh, we have had a good amount of people, a good amount of LEAs, actually already submit their high cost funds application, high cost fund applications. So this seems to be going pretty seamlessly. Um, the new application was um, updated with a lot of enhancements that hopefully are making this process a lot easier for LEAs. And as far as our application timeline, so uh, high cost funds opened on March 1st. It will close on May 2nd, and we will provide notification of award by July 1st, and you'll get that notification via email. A good reminder for LEAs is once they get that notification, it's just going to be a generic email that will say, um, please go into Apex to look at your award amount. Um, so the notification of award is really just kind of a heads up to go into Apex um, and look at what that final award will be for your LEA. I um, mean, here I just wanted to uh, draw your attention to and remind you this lives on our website um, it goes over the high cost fund application information. Um, it walks you through some of the eligibility requirements as well as required uploads. Um, and for the 21 22 school year the high cost fund eligibility threshold was 32,490 so if you expended more than this amount on either an in district placement a private off campus day placement or a residential placement your student would be um, eligible for um, award. And that's all I have. I'm kind of like Ed said, I have been pushing this information out to ESCs regularly. Um, if you need any support with your high cost fund application, um, your ESC should have a contact person or you're more than welcome to contact our team. I'll drop um, our email in the chat for you. And that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Salinas. Next, uh, next we have, uh... Uh, Ramonda uh, Aloye, excuse me. No problem. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ramonda Aloye with the Division of Review and Support. Just wanted to provide a friendly reminder that the self-assessment window will open on May 2nd, and that self-assessment window will close on September 30th. For this upcoming year, districts will complete the seven prioritized area. Um, we definitely wanted to make sure that districts had an opportunity due to all of the challenges that districts are facing um, currently with the impact of COVID um, and ensuring that all students are receiving instruction and services that they were able to engage in the self-assessment process with fidelity. So instead of completing all of the 23 compliance areas or strategy areas, we wanted to make sure that we reiterated that there are only seven priority areas that need to be completed in the self-assessment for this year. That window opens on May 2nd and it closes on September 30th. So it will also be included in our special education newsletter, but we just wanted to provide that update regarding the self-assessment. And that's all that we have today. Thank you very much. And uh, that concludes our webinar today. Our next one will be on the 28th of this month. And um, hope you have a great week. Thank you very much for joining us.